What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So, look, um, I know some people are gonna be like, "This is premature. This is premature. It's just the first game of the season." But it's an ominous pattern that merges with this team. It's 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 an ominous pattern that just emerges with this Brooklyn Nets team. And that is inconsistency. Um, inconsistency, um, not being able to beat the best opponents, beating up on the mediocre and lesser tier uh, teams so that you have a good record, but you lose consistently to the better teams in the NBA. And we're seeing this already. 130 to 108, shellacking at the hands of the Pelicans. They look really good. Um, many of us anticipate them to be a really good team this year, barring injury. And um, Ben Simmons was awful. Um, Kyrie Irving called out Ben Simmons. Um, but when you look at Kyrie Irving, bruh. I mean, I know you're an NBA champion, and that cannot be taken away from you. And you hit one of the biggest shots in the history of playoffs and the biggest shot in Cleveland Cavaliers history. But, bro, there are certain realities that have to be put out here. And that is that without LeBron James, you would perhaps be the most disappointing player of your generation. Because when you were in Cleveland, your teams were awful. Awful. <clears throat> 28 and 54, 36 and 46, 33 and 49, stuff like that. Now you could say, well, his teams weren't that great. Um, true. But we also had to remember that the Eastern Conference was weak as fuck. I mean, weak as fuck. And if you're a if you're a generational talent, you know, like Kyrie Irving is, um, you should at least be able. I'm talking about a generational talent. Like people tell you, Kyrie's a top seventy five player. So to me, a top seventy five player or a top fifty player is at least capable of putting his team on his back and at least taking him to the playoffs at times. He never has been able to really do that, in my opinion. I mean, he's had some stretches. But generally speaking, without LeBron James, he has not won. He has not won. He couldn't win in Cleveland. Then when he did have talent around him in Boston, he had a nice little stretch, I remember, at the beginning of that year, well, they won 14 straight games. But then he got hurt. And then, ironically, without him or Haywood, that team went to the conference finals and played the, the uh, Cavaliers, led by LeBron, to seven games. Uh, then the next year, I think Kyrie played, and they sucked, if memory serves me correctly. Um, ultimately, he has problems with his teammates. He, gets, he goes to Brooklyn, and um, without Kevin Durant, think they did they even make the playoffs I can't remember did they make the playoffs I can't remember I can't remember they made the playoffs without uh, without KD but KD comes back they lose to the Bucks in the second round and last year that atrocity that we saw against the Boston Celtics and generally speaking in most of those games when they needed him to step up, Kyrie did not. Not saying he didn't have some great performances, but a lot of times when they needed him to step up, he wasn't there. And the thing that I'm starting to emerge, that's emerging with Kyrie is he talks a good game, but oftentimes he's not backing it up. 
He says he wants to win all of the hardware this year. Um, Katie said this guy is capable of being an MVP if he wanted to be. Um, you know, talk, talk, talk. And um, the season is still <laughs> in its infancy. So he may come out there and play like a monster. But, man, I'm, I'm just saying, man, like after a while you just see certain shit, man. You just see certain shit, man, and you just, you know, I have to just see it. I just have to see it. If he if he comes out here and has a, a, a MVP season or or MVP caliber season, then I'll give him all the praise in the world. But I have to be honest, man. You know, I think I've been, a lot of us, honestly, have been giving him a bit of a pass because of the whole elixir thing. And the way the media went after him. And, um, you know, that was a disgrace what the media did to him. So I've been kind of lenient with Kyrie. But at the end of the day, it's about basketball, right? So there's no exceptions. If you're playing like doo-doo, um, you got to be called out. So it's, this is not an indictment on Kyrie Irving. It's an indictment on that entire team. People are tired of these excuses, man. They're tired of these excuses. It's, you got these guys who have t Hall of Fame caliber talent around them, man. And they're not getting it done for whatever reason. You have talent around you. Ben Simmons is very talented. Kyrie Irving, we know he's talented. Don't get me started on KD. They got drumming. You know what I'm saying? They got talent I know it's it's early it's early but man after a while man you're like damn what the fuck is the problem it's just uh, it's just a look <clears throat> I watched Allen Iverson who was blackballed out of the NBA by the way I watched Allen Iverson I watched Jason Kidd. I watched, shit, a lot of players. Damon Stoudemire in his earlier years. I watched players that didn't have these great teams around them be able to uplift their teams to higher levels. Coming out there and having vintage performances, doing a lot of heavy lifting, carrying that fucking big-ass backpack day in and day out. These motherfuckers have man purses today and they still can't get it done. <laughs> You're not doing the heavy lifting like these dudes did before. You got Hall of Famers around you. And they complain all the time, man. It's just, <clears throat> I don't know, bro, but tell me what you guys think.